ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Today we have a returning. I think that the, he's been on the pod three times now. So this is like the three peat club. And the, uh, you know, I love our next guest. And I was just talking about him last week. I think on the Patreon. And uh, listen, he he proves to everybody that you can be wrong about something and be so liked. I think he's just such a likable person. Uh, no, but I genuinely, I love to talk to him. I love to uh, get into it with him. And he just, I really do love his opinions. And I think you, if you haven't check out his podcast, because I think it's, I think it's a really great podcast where he does tell his truth uh, for better or worse. And he stands behind that. And I think that is, uh, I really do like aspects of that. And we're going to get into all of that, but, uh, his podcast is called Unpopular, of course. So we got Jack Peterson with us today. Hey, uh, thank you for having me back. Were you shit talking me on your Patreon? It's okay if no. you were. Actually, no, because we were talking about guests people wanted back. And oh, we talked about you, and because we were talking you, and we were talking about um, who was it? But you and I was like, and then I said, oh my god, I love you. I would love to have him back on. And then we ended up DM or DMing for something last week, and I was like. Oh yeah, will you come on? Because it was like kind of perfect timing. We had just been talking about you because guests really do like you. Um, I did notice that when I went to your podcast to catch up, and you had uh, really the creme de la creme of guests. You had Kelly Dodd Leventhal on recently. Um, was that like a suicide mission? Why? Why did we have her on? Oh my uh, god, she, that is she that on is... this season of Orange County? Or we? I, uh, I'm trying to remember. No. No, she wasn't on this season, unfortunately. <laughs> That's why it wasn't very good. Uh, that that has that was in the works for so long. You have no idea. We've been trying to do it for like a year. And I'm really, I think we're probably the same. Like I get a lot of like tech anxiety and stuff. And I know that because Kelly Dodd's all over the place. I was like, you know, I want to like sitting down where she doesn't have any uh, distractions. Because sometimes we'll try and book it. And it was like right before like the 4th of July. And I'm like, okay, she's going to be out like partying and stuff. And yeah, we Which finally... Which, by the we, way, I would kind of want to. I w would want to talk to Kelly when she's been partying. Well, when she's that's, loose. That's kind of what happened because we were meant to do it like a more of like a you know I thought it should be like in the zone. It'd be like serious, not not serious interview, but you know what I mean. And then she comes on the Zoom and she's like on her phone and she's like, "Oh, sorry, I'm getting ready for a barbecue. I didn't mean to do this on our day." And she's like all over the place, but it was actually kind of amazing. I don't know if she was drinking, but she was. It's on very one. Kelly that Dodd, what you're saying. But I, I listened to the clip you posted, and you guys, the clip was like, "Ah, she's licking pussy, and she has seven <laughs> kids down there. It's disgusting." And immediately, I was like, "She's talking about Bronwyn, right? Was she talking? She was talking about yes, Bronwyn." She, she said Bronwyn um is more worried about eating pussy than her kids. <laughs> <laughs> the, well, okay, this is what I hate about because I think Kelly is just an extreme asshole at times, but I hate that you know, even assholes have points. And I always thought with Bronwyn, especially, you know, she was so worried about the publicity and the PR of it all. Like, even if you're in love with somebody and you're in a new relationship, whether it be lesbian, straight, gay, whatever, she put out a press release that she, um, she was able to have seven orgasms. Her girlfriend was going down, which by the way, is like, that sounds amazing, but why go to entertainment tonight with that? Like why go out to page six with that? Um, she used to follow me by the way. And then I made fun of that and she unfollowed me, which is like, oh, okay, bye. That's I am so obsessed with Bronwyn. I miss Bronwyn and Kelly on my television every single day. I think that what Bronwyn has done is so interesting because if people remember on the show, when she first came on and she was like a normal stay at home, she was like, I'm the stay at home mom with like seven kids and I've never had a job and stuff. And she had all these issues with her mom, Dr. Deb, because her mom, <laughs> Dr. Deb had been like a normal housewife and then went to Burning Man one year and then just became <laughs> this like completely other person, like abandoned the family and was like partying and then it left Bronwyn with all these issues and then the next season Bronwyn went and did that and ran off moved to New York part-time with her lesbian lover like come on barely see but she's had kid. like three lesbian love like she's had yeah. three intense love affairs but she had Since Fernanda from yeah. that was a friend of the show on OC yes. from back yes. <laughs> they were doing a thing together I think that was to tr try to get on the show or something and then she had this weird DJ that she was dating that was the the nine month relationship with the, you know, 50 orgasms a day. That DJ, by the way, is so shady because she has like, I think like 2 million followers dude, on Instagram. They're, they're dude, wait, 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 no, I'm a, I was about to literally say the same thing. So I went down a rabbit hole like a couple months back when she unfollowed me to like, and her girlfriend was like, okay, she's verified. And she has like 
wow, a million followers. And then you look at her post and it get little to no likes, which usually is a first clue that somebody has bought followers, folks. You know, like, it's just one of those things you're like, oh, this person has fully bought followers. Cause I was like, I've never heard of this girl. And I'm not saying that she's not, you know, has work and famous or whatever, but remember when you see those numbers. And then I was like looking at Bronwyn's and I love that you say, did you start this whole conversation by saying you really love what she's done? And I was like, that's really, it's cool when I, I love what she's done too, is just try to completely um, not have any kind of success in any avenue. I think that's amazing. <laughs> it's really, truly, no, she tries so hard and nobody, like the rebranding of Braun went up like, let me tell you about sobriety, folks. And <laughs> oh let my me God. Tell, and let obsession. me tell you about gay relationships, folks. I'm like, you're two years into being like openly gay. How are you giving advice? You're going to be a gay and influencer now and it just seems like she wants that so bad the lesbian influencer well the thing with sober people though is that when people do get so because this is why i believe that she's sober it's all they fucking talk about that's oh i do but wait i do wait i think it's amazing that she like listen i totally i'm not saying that's fake at all but you're right it's like it's like people that do crossfit that's all they talk about or the people you know it's like that's all i do or if you're v i notice a lot of vegans are the same way because they're so proud of the lifestyle and they should be proud, but then Bronwyn wants to try to make money off of that, you know, of like, I want to tell you how to do it. Well, I th- I don't even think it's money. I just think it's ego. She is like an off the chain narcissist, like her mother. And it's really interesting. And I'm like, that's a story that I want. Like, I know people hated Bronwyn. I loved Bronwyn and Kelly on the show. I could not get enough of both of them. They were both polar opposites. I thought it was so interesting. I think they both had a lot to offer to the show. And with Bronwyn, I'm like, oh my God, I want to dive into that. Like, I, my dream storyline, if they kept that cast, is how do these women on OC, who they're very suburban women, they're like, they're quite conservative. How do they react to seeing Bronwyn go, oh, I'm running off to live part-time in New York with my lesbian lover, leaving my seven kids. Like, what is that reaction like on camera? Like, and Bravo robbed us of that. They've really fucked up the casting on OC, I think. (laughs) Well, I mean, and they still don't seem to be able to get it together. Like I was talking about somebody about this today, where it's like, I, I, if I had my druthers, I would, everybody out of the gate would get a two-year contract. You can't fire anybody after the first season because I think that's even ridiculous. Like, I thought Noella did two, like, I mean, wait, she did seven, she tried to do seven people's worth of work and we didn't get a sense of who she was. And I guess I just got the sense that this is somebody that grew up on housewives. She was, she's trying to give us everything. It was like a Frankenstein thing of seven different pieces of other housewives instead of actually, I didn't get a beat on who she was. I would have been interested in another season just to see if we could have gotten anywhere. Like Dr. Jen even was, you know, you could say boring as hell, but those little, I would have liked to have seen Dr. Jen try to date. I would have liked to have, you know, like there's, I don't want to give up on people that quickly. Oh, I totally agree. They should not do one season. I mean, there's some cases where you're like, wow, this person's really not working out. But even then, I think that if someone's not working out on the season, maybe like edit them down to a friend and then try again. Oh, wait, sorry, out. my my cut out one sec. Hold on. Hmm. Wait, one sec. Yeah, you're right. Wanna... Huh. Okay. So, weird. Oh, all right, we're back. You... Yes. Okay, we're back. And it's still yeah. recording. Um, we're not going to lose yeah, the recording. Yeah, still still right? recording. Yeah, totally. Okay, yeah. Let me just go back to, and I'll just start again. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I totally agree with you. There should not be any one season housewives because sometimes people need the time to get their feet wet. And I had the OC producer, Thomas Kelly, on my podcast. And I asked him about that because I said, I love OC, but I was like, the only issue I said, the issue is not the storylines. It's not the producing. It's just the constant cast changes. You just, you bring in two people every year and then you fire them. And he was like, yeah, look, there's this thing with the network where if you don't just hit the ground and like skyrocket right out the gate straight away, like you're done. And I think that's way too much pressure. I think maybe even what they could start doing is bringing people into a friend, like how Sutton came in as a friend and then got upgraded. Like maybe that can be the new approach to kind of ease well, then, people but, but, but into you- it. Well, look about then Atlanta, which I know you watch. Marlo got brought up finally from friend to that. And it's, I personally don't think it's working out too well for Marlo this season. What do you think so far of Marlo being an actual full cast member? Okay. I have an interesting take on the new season of Atlanta because I 
hated Portia and I thought Nini needed to go and stuff. So I love the, I think this cast is amazing. I didn't like Drew and now I love watching like everything Drew does just cracks me up. I think Sanya is really good. So I think they've got a really good cast. I think all the personal storylines this season are really good. I think every single thing on this season is good except the drama, which is so contrived and out of nowhere. And you see it in scenes, whether it's Marlo or it's Drew or it's Sheree, it's like they're sitting down to a dinner and they're like, oh, we need to have a fight to make this scene usable so they go through the motions of a fight and it's a bit like have have we got enough footage of that okay let's move on that's what it's like and marlo is just poking at people with crazy stuff and i'm just like i honestly i know we watch the shows for the drama but i'm loving everything else on atlanta so much that i would be happy to just watch them getting along as friends and going through their real life stuff i'm sure real drama would happen eventually and you know marlo's storyline with her nephews is so compelling it's probably like the best storyline on that I mean, season what, you and guys if you're not watching it. she sent her uh nephews away because she didn't really feel like they were appreciating the lifestyle that she was giving them and they were very disrespectful and stuff like that so she sent them away and then this past week's episode she was trying to get into it with candy and like what a weird relationship she has, has with mama joyce and it was like marlo what the fuck are you talking you sent your you know you're like you sent your kids you sent your kids away because you didn't want you know like you can't do that with real kids like that's not uh, you just can't do that and i, I but i love what you you said though and i think this is my initial attraction to some of these shows is that we did with atlanta we are getting to dig into actual knowing of their families on a separate thing you know and i think this is a building season like this is a thing where it's like we are going to hopefully love these families so much that you know two more seasons past this which is probably too long for bravo we could get magic. Like there, even if you take Beverly Hills, these ladies have been together for a long time. And that's why we get what we get now. Like, because that relationship is so strong for better or worse. And I think it pays dividends, but you have to wait that out. But everything on the Atlanta season's good. Like they have hilarious confessionals. They have interesting stuff going on in their lives. They all have different storylines. Like the stuff with Sheree, with the Tyrone was very compelling. And then obviously we all were invested in She by Sheree. We've been watching She by Sheree for over a decade. We want to see that. Like the stuff that Candy's got going on, the parenting. I'm like, that's the reality of it. And then they had these stupid fake fights and it's the, the fights are totally taking away from it. They had that stupid friend that for tomb, she was the only part of the season. I haven't liked that screechy friend of Sheree's that was always <laughs> trying to make drama with people. She was horrible. And I'm like, I honestly swear I would have enjoyed the drama free, positive season of Atlanta this year. I would have really liked that instead of them, you seeing the formula and the fakeness of the show and them going, Oh, okay, we have to have a fight with Marlo though. I am starting to wonder Is this, because of course we always thought, okay, Marlo's thirsty and she'll do anything for airtime. I'm almost thinking, and I'm listening to her interviews doing her press tour, I'm like, maybe this is her. Maybe she's just one of those people that gets annoying and pushes your buttons. Like this actually might not be for TV. At oh, this yeah, point. I, I think that that's a very real and I think potentially that's why she was held as a friend for mm. so long and not moved up because I, you know, but I think the fan demand was so strong for her. And then like, OK, here, here it is. This is what. So when she comes on as a spice, you're like, hell yeah, Marlo. But when you, she's front and center, it. But also that's another thing is like maybe she's pushing too hard just because of it's her first year as a season regular. I think a producer, I think a producer should have come in and said, Marlo, dial it back. But I think that they haven't had that much drama on this season and the producers are thinking we need drama, we need drama. So they're letting her just run with that. But I I think they should have stepped in and just went, girl, be yourself, chill out. You don't need to do this. Um, Yeah. And it's, it's taking away from it, but I still really like this season. I think it's a good season. No, like I was watching it uh, two days ago and I was like, it's, it's always an enjoyable watch. I just don't watch it on Sunday night, like day and date anymore, because Mm. there's other, like so many things on Sunday that I watch, including like the 90 day fiance universe and all of this mess. So I get to it. Are you back into into 90 day? No, so we'll see. Uh, talking about contrived, I think this season of 90 Day Fiance is so contrived and oh, so really? painful. But I will say, I got turned on to 90 Day UK on Discovery Plus. And Wait, I there's a UK lo- one now? Yes, and it's so good. What It's it's so real. It's shot. So it's like, it's back to like old school 90 day where oh. I was like, this is great. Like the, I, I was really, I just saw two episodes of it. I, I think, you know, so I don't know, maybe it gets really bad, but already in those two episodes, 
I like better than this entire past season of 90 Day Fiance, the regular one. And it's only an hour. You guys, only an hour, not two hours. I haven't watched 90 Day for like a few years now, but I'm always blown away every time I see a headline of like 90 Day Love in Paradise. Like the 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 amount of spin-offs oh. they can stretch out of this is like mind blowing. It is incredible. You know it's going to be in, they're going to go to space. 90 Day in space, 90 Day the, underwater. 90 there's day. no limit. There is no limit. I mean, if you watch TLC, I guess they're moving a lot of stuff to to Discovery Plus now. But I mean, if you watch TLC in the states, is it literally just 90 Day all day? Is there anything else on? No, because they have extreme uh uh they have like searching oh, the sisters for, the, the fat they have sisters, extreme so sisters I love that. and yeah. they have the searching for sister wives and they have uh, oh that's true the, they have all the sister wives like by the way tlc is great because i always say if like you have like and anybody listening if you have like a really bad wart on your toe they'll give you a whole series like if you have something weird on your head you have a series right there if you have a family that's all weird looking they will give you a series at tlc do you ever get like as a podcaster? Do you ever sometimes you're watching these other things? Like I really like the bat. I really like Bachelor Nation. Okay, I like the whole Bachelor world, and I like. TLC I'm excited about Bachelor and- in Paradise, but yeah. I will. I, I I've stopped watching the oh, Bachelor well, and Bachelorette. Do you ever do you ever watch these other ones like the you know 90 Day? And do you sometimes think you know what? I wish I'd been a TLC podcaster. I wish I'd been a Bachelor podcaster. There of are a Bravo times. Podcaster. Well, there are times when you get into it online, or you 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 see how. I was talking about, and this is very present because of what I was talking about yesterday and today of just in terms of the Kathy Hilton, watch what happens live appearance with the Lizzo <laughs> mistake and all of that, which I know like, this is like your bread and butter kind of. And I, I was saying like, holy shit. And somebody was like, kind of trying to tell me like, well, I'm just really disappointed in your reaction. And I'm like, wait, that's my honest reaction. Holy shit. What a fucking idiot. But I can also find humor in that. I mean, there is you know, unfortunately, a lot of humor comes from just horrible things. Now, if I really, truly believe that Kathy Hilton was like, fuck Lizzo, she looks like she looks like precious, you know, but Kathy's a fuck. And by the way, I think Kathy says shit about everybody. I think Kathy has probably said sh- wild shit about black people, wild shit about gay people, which is supposedly what she did in Austin, uh, Aspen. But like, I don't I don't look to Kathy Hilton to teach me how to feel or treat. I know, people. just enjoy I it. Don't- Although. But but there's a lot of this. Okay, first of all, I don't think what Kathy Hilton did was problematic. Look, if you asked me, to, if you got some actors from the Marvel universe to me and said, "Who's this?" I wouldn't know who the fuck you're talking, and I would say completely the the wrong thing. So, you know, I can totally see if you're not familiar with like music and stuff, how she could make like I would. There are so many celebrities that if you showed me, I would like mix them up. Um, but if a lot of people are enjoying the the mistake because it is funny. I mean, there's some people. But then I saw people were but... like, if, if if it was if it was somebody if if that if that happened, at least if... Rina did it, they would yeah, want to burn yeah. her alive. Wait, was be that, wait, wait, was that your tweet I read actually? Now that I'm thinking, I know about it, it wasn't was that... mine, but I did think that I was like, girl, if Erica Jane or Lisa Rinna did this, it would people the, those annoying Bravo Karens would be like protesting out that we can't watch yeah. this anymore. Okay, <laughs> but regard, I mean, <laughs> Erica. By the way, just like Garcelle says next week in the next week's episode, you know, Erica Jane does fine just by her she doesn't need to call anybody precious because she will screw it up herself over and over again but i like that you like and by the way i was looking at your stories today and i also like that you finally are coming around to actually you know that you say what a perfect villain moment as they, they were driving to the homeless and toothless event over at dorit's and they were driving, and what did you say, like perfect villain moment? Or yes, something? but that—that that, that is it. I mean, the, the truth is that Sutton and Garcelle are the villains of the show, and people just don't see it. But in terms of the editing, <laughs> I, I like the way they lean into the editing for the Karens at home, and and oh Erica and, and Lisa are so like campy as they're coming in and like cackling as they waddle up the stairs. I yes, thought they're that fucking was... witches. Chuck, <laughs> the fact that you are like, oh, the true villains are. I got to tell you, I thought. Dore- uh, sorry, I thought Sutton would have turned tail after last season. And I feel like she went into some sort of training mode over the season where she worked with somebody to like toughen up. You're not going to be like that when Erica comes at you, you know, because I'm shocked that she's actually able to like roll her eyes now. But is it what I was going to ask you is like, do you think 
Erica has lost all power. Once the wealth goes away, people are like, what the fuck are you even doing here? Like, is there a little bit of that attitude? Do you think no, of like, well, you're just going to fart in the corner? What are you doing? No, she's the, well, she's the most fucking talked about person on Bravo. People are obs- obsessed with her. I mean, she yawns well, yeah. and Twitter goes well, into Bill a meltdown. You know, she you're... has, she has had the most, she's had Jack, the most. Do you know, in... I get a lot of dick. <laughs> Dick, 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 all day. I'm eating dick. I'm, I'm but, eating. I'm taking dick. She. Did you know she gets a lot of sex, Chuck? Did you know that? But here's the thing. This is the same thing that happened with Countess Luann, and it was amazing. She had this buttoned up, uptight persona, and then one day, suddenly, she was getting drunk. She was falling in the bushes. She was having sex with like every Tom, the Dick, pirate, and Harry. Yeah. yeah. And Erica is going through that. Wait, it's, actually, it's a- you're right. Tom and Harry, we know it for sure. Was there a dick involved in there somewhere? <laughs> I mean, Eric is having the same story arc and that that's longevity on a show like this, because it's amazing. Cause you look at where she's, where she's calm now. She's had over like a rock bottom moment. Now she will rise again. And it's such, it's, it feels like a very and classic. Do what though, Jacques? What is she going to do? Like sell her horse hair? Like what is she, what, where, where the, is the rise going to happen? Like the, what, what is she going to do? The sky is the limit. She's talent. She's a star. She could <laughs> she could do it all. Limit. Like, hey, you son I of do. a bitch. Tell me that you think she's an amazing pop star like Lady Gaga. Tell me. Do not she's not like, like okay, she's not like Lady Gaga, but I will say, and this is true, that I was a fan of her music pre-Housewives. A lot of the gays were because people go, no one knew who she no, was. And I'm like, the know, gays expect, knew who she it, was. You know, we knew expensive. who she was. Yeah, she yeah. had a couple bops, the, you know. The dance songs. I still listen to the songs sometimes. I love it. Um no, but you know what I do think? This is going to sound like I'm throwing shade at her, and I'm actually not. But you know how she was saying on the episode the other week she should be a dominatrix? I think she should be a celebrity dominatrix, um, like a really uh, a high-end one, and she wouldn't even have to fuck anyone. She could literally just tell them to, like, lick her boots and stuff. I think she should be a dominatrix. I think she should do OnlyFans. I think she should do a sex toy line. OnlyFans, I actually was like, why? She's doing this little, what is it, scriber or something where you can pay $5 a month to get, like, text message updates from Erica. And I'm like, oh, I might have girl, to subscribe to that. If you're going that far, just do the OnlyFans already because you're already putting suggestive photos online why not go the full yeah, well, the, you know the thing is okay i know a lot of because i know a lot of reality stars here in australia and really australia is so trashy like the big shows here at this point Do you know i every- have a, I, I have a decent australian audience like yeah. people from australia listen to this like isn't that crazy like isn't that like i get so many nice emails like what is it about australia like do you guys just love reality shows like i mean it's i think like so awesome it's like such a our, cool audience our reality shows are pretty crappy the married at first sight australia is amazing but the thing here is now that basically people go on these shows they go on married at first sight or whatever then they just go straight onto only fans after but i know a lot of these people and they are making like they're making a lot of money like some of them are making like over 100 grand a month doing that girl OnlyFans. ashley from below deck which i know you don't watch but she went to oh i did watch that season because sailing yachts my favorite yeah she's cleaning up so imagine someone of erica's level could be making a lot of money on only sorry i just froze it so fast i don't know what's going on with my camera once sorry one sec i don't know what keeps going i don't know if this 4k camera keeps like overheating or something Oh, is it definitely your your camera? It's not my internet it's, or no, Wi-Fi, it's, is it? Def no, it's no, it's definitely me. Oh, okay. I don't know. I don't know why though. That's so weird. Um, okay. Yeah, wait, let me um, let me just wait. I'll finish the yeah, sentence go back. I was saying. Um, so you can edit together. So someone of Erica's level, she would make so much money doing that. If people from fucking below deck and married at first sight Australia are making that much money, Erica you can make a lot. And you do not have to do hardcore porn on only fans you do not have to be on there with like a gaping asshole okay you, you could be doing like lingerie and and yes. topless and people pay to message with you and talk with you and interact with you so i actually think she should lean into this whole sex thing and do like a sex and do sex toys if and you're gonna say like you're that. getting that much sex why not then make some money off it why not like i don't care about your flipping hair that you're like I've always loved hair. Everybody knows. Erica hair. Like, who cares? If you're known for sex, 
show us some sex, you know? And I, I think that, look, I'm wondering if maybe in her mind she's thinking, no, I want to hold out. I know that once, you know, this blows over, I'm going to be able to get more credible entertainment jobs. Maybe she's got some, like, manager that's telling her that. But you can put us, if she starts making, here's the thing, if she starts making a lot of money on OnlyFans and doing, like, quote, unquote, like, sex work, whatever, she can come out and put that an empowering spin on that and be like, yeah, baby, you know, I built built myself back up and now I'm making a million dollars a month on OnlyFans and it- I've got this sex toy line. And people would kind of respect it. I mean, kind of. It. I mean, her 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 housewife's tagline is like, "I have nothing to hide and nothing to lose," and that's why I'm on OnlyFans. Like, if you really <laughs> truly believe that, do that because I have a feeling like time is of the essence on this stuff. You know, like she's what fifty two or fifty three years old, she's still be- and she looks thirty. I, I, well, let's calm down. <laughs> I, I will no, I will say she's she's pretty. I'm not. I, I've never commented on like, more than her pretty. looks. Well, what about PK? What about PK and PK? Um, I've and, got new teeth. I've got PK me, new teeth. And M- Mauricio, when they were talking about who was the hottest in there, and they and they caught that on the mic, and they, they fucking died at that. And one of them said Erica. <laughs> I they love, said like Erica I mean, and someone else. What is, I, like, I love the rumor that gets passed around online all the time about Mauricio and Dorit. Like that they're, you know, like, oh, oh you, can tell, you can tell they hook up. And I'm like, well, how do people watch these shows? Like, I literally watch it and I'm like, there's no part of me that's like, they're banging. Like, no, it like, I've never I, thought I, that. No, I love that people write this kind of fan fiction and I do it sometimes myself, I guess. But it is funny to hear those things that kind of like take heat and all that or like kind of gain traction. Um, Now, to one of the worst people I've ever seen on TV, Lisa Rinna. I know you're a big fan uh, of Lisa, but you've got to be embarrassed this season, right? you got to be like, well, maybe I've called it wrong this season. No, not at all. But I, I will say that this season recently, it's actually the first time I've really had anything negative to say about her because usually... I mean, she she go. I think she's always right in basically everything. Everything she said, when you look back, things that people hated on her for, it's like, oh, she was right about Kim. Oh, she was right about like she was fucking right about them all. She goes too far with it though. But this season, yeah, she's definitely she's definitely gone too far. Where I've been like, okay, Lisa Rinna, and I usually don't say that, and I'm thinking this is not a good look. And I think that um. I think it's a combination of different things going on. I think she's obviously grieving Lois and I think that's actually really affecting her. I think she's been in the housewives bubble for too long because you see her on social media, which I agree with all of her Instagram posts, by the way. So, but just the way she's, she, she loves to do a post and a delete, but she's doing it more often recently. I think she's, she's going off the rails a little bit. I wonder if she needs to go on pause. Like, I do not think that she needs. That's what I was going to ask you is that, because somebody had mentioned that to me the other day. I'm like, do you think they'll put her on pause like Dorinda? And I was like, no way. And then I started thinking about it. I was like, wait a sec. If that really was the Dorinda and it was like all the anger towards Tinsley. And of course it was like the drinking as well. But like, if you're going to do that with Dorinda and it doesn't have to be tit for tat and they're different production companies, but would you ever put Lisa Rinna on pause? Like we love, you know, like I always think sometimes the Beverly Hills ladies or, you know, live in their own kind of, bubble away from the bravo universe even though we did see kyle of course on ultimate girls trip you know it's weird like i i would find it really weird to find if rena got cast on a girls trip for some reason like i almost think they set them aside because it's one of the most popular shows or they they don't deem to i don't know do you know what i'm saying yeah, no, I know. I, but with her going on pause, I could, yeah, even the stuff with Kathy Hilton, right? So again, Lisa Rinna will be proven to be right about Kathy Hilton, you know, the fan favorite. Kathy, but Jack, Lisa who Rinna cares? Can... Yes, Kathy's a bad person. Wow, you got it out of okay, everybody. yeah, but you we guys love know. to come, you got you love to come after Erica and put Erica and Lisa Rinna through hell. I mean, they cannot do anything without just the uh, constant abuse online from everyone, oh, and then and then when it comes to win. when it comes to Sutton, when it comes to Sutton and Garcelle and the gold, favorites, it's gold. like they just but, but, they no, get away no, with murder. No, so, listen, I, I Sutton has done so many stupid things, but I find that actually for somebody that is wildly insecure to be able to finally stand up for themselves, I do encourage that because you have two of the biggest fucking bullies on tv rinna and erica and that's no, what the two are. biggest bullies, bullies are sutton and they, garcelle are no, sutton and garcelle no are the two because biggest they stand bullies up for I've themselves finally they do erica not they are the biggest are bullies in, they are the biggest instigators sutton and garcelle they are, are so you, vile Chuck, the you way need that to be they've... committed if that's what you we literally just watched a bunch of episodes where rinna was just like freaking out of them like i got there 
like yeah i'm saying this this time i agree with you on rina but usually it's the other she's holding people accountable as they should be okay um we, you know, with Sutton, she came and kicked Erica when she was at her lowest. So she could, Sutton was Wait, not a full time fundraiser. That was her lowest. No, no, back, no, back the other season when Sutton got upgraded to full time because Sutton was not a full time housewife. And she came after Erica when Erica had done nothing wrong. It was Tom Girardi's crimes. And she came after her because production was in her ear and she wanted to get upgraded and get a diamond, which she did get. That's now a- we have. She now didn't we get had a diamond got, because she couldn't show her kids. Now we no, she didn't get a diamond because I think she has. She, I think she's neurodivergent. Something is off oh with her. God. I think uh, she is not normal. They are. Oh edited, yeah, but Rin is the her, height of normalcy. Are you? They give. Uh, there's something a demon. Wrong. I'm telling you there's something wrong with Sutton. And if you look at her, if you look at her interviews on like the, you know, the housewives nightcaps and the podcasts and stuff without the Bravo editing, giving her a good edit, something's not right up there. With Garcelle, we have Garcelle rehashing Lisa Rinna's five-year-old storylines. Do you think she has a drinking problem? Like, girl, Lisa Rinna did that five years ago with Kim Richards, who actually did have a drinking problem and got her fucking arrested in Target. And Wait, has, you know, I, listen, I'm on SSRIs and I talk about this all the time. I'm on Lexapro and I've been on like, listen, you can drink. Like, I'm sorry, something else is at work there because it ain't Lexapro. And it's like, yeah, something it, else. She has the do- whole world hating her and abusing her for something that she didn't do. She's been made the fall guy for Tom Girardi's crimes in the eyes of the public. But don't when lie about what nothing's... you're taking and how it's like you're going to actually turn off people to SSRIs and things that can actually help you. But Lexapro she- doesn't make you act like a fucking idiot at parties. Like, well, it just doesn't. Some pe- different people react differently to SSRIs. So some people do have an adjustment period and they, they takes a while to get the balance right and, and the meds right. She's and then when you add in all the stress, she was talking you, about it last season too. When you add in all the stress that she's going through, when you add in all of the abuse, the abuse that she cops, all the legal problems, being in this show, like having to be on defense, having some Karen like Garcelle, like trying to come at you like Lisa Vanderpump style with some maneuvering behind the scenes, like you're going to be stressed out. Well, maybe um, take a laxative and chill out. You know, <laughs> and I love that Erica is showing us this vulnerable side. Is just putting it all out oh, there. She a, is. Wait, she's wait. The Doug, epitome of one of the biggest moments on TV was like, "You tell Paris and Nikki, I didn't want to put a stain on their special day." Which, by the way, Paris oh, didn't I get think, married to Nikki. First off, I, and like the fact that like she thinks Paris was like. Mom, should I still get married? Eric is not coming, you know? That was just emo drunk talk, though. That was just yeah, like, yeah, I'm yeah. I'm wasted and I'm just like making a fool of myself. Um, no, and I, I think Eric is doing amazing this season, but I am a little worried about Lisa Rinna. And even with Lisa Rinna coming up to Kathy Hilton, which I'm like, yeah, of course Lisa Rinna is going to be right about all of this. Like, and the, the fan favorite that you guys lord, oh my God, she can do no wrong. Now you're going to find out like, all these problematic things about wait, Kathy, wait, wait. but the thing, no, but but I think Lisa Rin is going I, too far on Kathy. That's what I'm saying. She's there's going only too a hard small on Kathy. group of us though, that I think like, I don't like, listen, I know Kathy's a, a cuckoo bird. Like I know, like I, I do, but it, I don't think it's either, or I don't think there's one bad and one good. I think we're filled with all of these different shades. And I think one person, like I started the first two seasons. I liked Rinna. Like I was like, Oh hell yeah. And then she slowly changed because she actually finally got a recurring gig that was actually getting getting her attention and stuff. And you know, like, that's like, you know, catnip for her is. Oh, wait, wait, I disagree. Cause I actually didn't like her that much the first two seasons. And then after see, that, we're very, like we're different she, in how we felt like she things, was you know? more herself afterwards and was more like, you know what? And then I was like, oh yeah, Lisa Rinna's on it. Like she knows what the fuck's going on. And then I was team Lisa Rinna after that. <laughs> um, So your podcast unpopular, which you guys need to go subscribe to, you had done the Kelly interview. Was there any other things that she said in that interview that were, um, I mean, I feel like anything that comes out of this girl's mouth and almost on purpose to get people talking is controversial. It's Was no, there it's anything? Not on purpose. It's not on purpose because she's really like she- that. She, yeah, she doesn't, she just had no filter because after the, she was so harsh. And after the interview, she messaged me and she said, oh, I, you know, I think it was too harsh. I'm like, no, people love it. Like, you know, my audience. You're like, I'm not editing. I'm not editing (laughs) this. One thing I was happy about with my audience is, of course, she's saying, you know, things that people aren't going to agree with about, like, you know, the vaccine and stuff, you know, all of just all of her different views on things. You guys started talking about vaccines? Oh, my God. Oh, that's it started. That's how she we started it. Um, But, of course, she's she's putting all that stuff out there. But 
I was really happy that I only got one, I only got one message from someone who I've never even seen before. And they were like, you're irresponsible, like letting her come on and, you know, spew these views. But everyone else that listens to my show was able to, even if they didn't agree with her, I mean, some people did agree with her, some people didn't, but they were able to like appreciate it for entertainment of like, oh, that's crazy Kelly Dodd being Kelly Dodd. This is so much fun. And I was so relieved about that and that it wasn't, you know, a wave of messages of, I can't believe you had her on, but I do. Sh- yeah. You, I do get nervous sometimes when I have a certain person on or certain like, or if I talk about a certain topic, you know, especially with podcasting, I don't know if this is like with all kind of forms of entertainment, you know, everybody's, it's just so it's like, I feel like sometimes people listen because at listen in one of the most vulnerable, sensitive moments of their life, because they, you know, they take it so personally, like yeah, everything, they you know, a lot. and I, and, and I, I will absorb that sometimes. And the, you know, it's it's a lot to absorb sometimes and it's not like boohoo woe is me because i'm so lucky to do this but it is sometimes there will be days where i'll get like just so down because a bunch you know like, i'm just like oh shit man yeah like, the bad I- feedback for sure like no that happens to all of us look i me and kelly were in talks to do this we've been trying to tee it up with and because we're in different countries the schedule's hard to do we've been trying to do this since i don't know like a year and a half we've been talking on and off about doing this and I, even at the start i was thinking like oh god you know should i have her on am i gonna have to hold her accountable like for things and then when I was able to like get over that over because I've had the podcast for longer now and I was just so happy that I was able to have fun with it and enjoy it and I do think she was wrongfully attacked for a lot of stuff so um you know I was Rick was Rick in the background yeah oh yeah yeah he was he was um I thought he was going to try take over but he didn't he was (laughs) because I noticed they have a YouTube channel now which she's trying to rebrand as a YouTuber and uh, I noticed he really does a lot of the he- like not heavy lifting. He but does. He's there, kind yeah, of like if he's she's color commentary. And he- yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, you you can kind of tell that. But I was really happy that people were able to enjoy it and have fun with it, whether they agreed with her or they disagreed. And she said so much. I mean, she absolutely dragged Emily, who I really like Emily. I'm a big fan of Emily's on the yeah, show. Yeah, me too. I, I like Emily yeah. a lot. Yeah. And because people hate on Emily a lot. And I actually think she's been a really good addition on the show. And I think, look, I find Gina, personally, I find Gina annoying, but I actually think she's a good housewife. And uh you know, Kelly ripped into them. Who else did she go into? Obviously, we did vaccine stuff. Um, ripped into Bravo. I mean, what else? We talked yeah. about the drunk wives matter thing. We, I that. mean, everything, everything you expect from a Kelly Dodd interview. Um, we does she? There. I mean, do you get the sense that she, like Tamara, is desperate to get back on the show, and that's why she wants to stay somewhat relevant in this universe because it worked for Tamara. Tamara's back. No, I actually, I don't. I'm sure she would go back if she was offered to go back. She would definitely go back for sure. But no, because I think someone that was desperate to go back wouldn't be as outspoken as she has been. She's like, she got, that's why she got fired. It wasn't even for what she did on the show. It was for how she was outspoken on social media. And she's leaned into that more and she's gone more unfiltered with it. It's sort of like, we've got, since she left OC, we've got like Kelly Dot Unchained, you know, Kelly Dot Unfiltered. Like the ver- it's like the version on OC was like the filtered Kelly Dot or something. But and I that think, was even but crazier. at the same time, maybe that will find its own audience. But sometimes when that spotlight is off you, it's like, yeah, man, scream as loud as you want. Like, well, hopefully somebody yeah. hears it, you know? She does. She has a very engaged audience for sure. Like she actually, people really like people hate her, but people love her. Like she really is that polarizing person where people just like think she's like amazing or they just cannot stand her. Like I, but I had a lot of messages from people going, I'm not going to listen if you're having Kelly Dot on. Then I'm getting messages after. Of course they listened and they like think it's hilarious. Yeah. Um, But you know, Bronwyn, Bronwyn and Kelly were kind of fired for the same thing. That it, That's the thing that people feel like Kelly was just fired for because being you know, she's conservative because well, she's, you know, more conservative or right leaning or whatever you want to frame it as. But, um, and she definitely got a lot of hate for that, but Broman and Kelly were both essentially fired for the same thing was that they were both deemed too polarizing on each side because they were both so in their political things because Bronwyn was all about her like activism and her sobriety and her lesbianism and her BLM and all this stuff and then Kelly was on the other side with her vaccine stuff and all of that I think they were both just deemed like this is too much like we want to play it safer although they shouldn't have they should have kept them both on but anyway (laughs) well speaking of vanilla and safer you're a huge fan of Teddy Mellencamp and (laughs) you have tried I remember back in the day you know, I think you were trying or you were close to getting her on your show. 
And, you know, she does the uh, two TPs in the pod, uh, which is a very successful podcast. The number one, the number one housewives podcast. So, you know, Teddy by top, two former continue. housewives, right? Yeah. Yes. Um, so uh, does, do you think it eats Teddy alive that Tamara's back on the show and still people universally agree that Teddy shouldn't be back on the show? Do you, well, I mean, do you think it's weird? Do you think it causes any kind of rift in between them at all of like, you know, at the end of the day, Tamara does have this diehard audience and Teddy has you. Well, <laughs> well, there's actually a lot of teddy bears out there and you know, we, we don't all feel comfortable to come out and to speak up because the bullies on social media are so vile and they attack us for liking Teddy. Um, yes, I've been trying to get Teddy on my podcast since basically since I started the podcast, like before she even had the two T's in a pod, I was trying to get Teddy on. When she on. was just one T in a pod. Yeah, uh, so she was one yeah. T in a pod and... You know, I I talk to her, you know, management. She has a very huge entourage because of a star of her caliber does have a lot of people. And <laughs> she, wait, are you talking talk- about her kids? What are you talking <laughs> about here? Like, <laughs> and I can, I do have some good news. Uh, Teddy, and she does follow me now and she has acknowledged me finally after many years of me standing her. I uh, have not <laughs> asked her to come on the pod directly because I'm scared. I mean, I know she's busy. Wait, I'm wait, 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 that I don't get. You are outspoken. Why can't you ask Teddy to be on your, well, wait, I'm that, that doesn't make sense. Because what but if she I says too, no? But- I finally, I feel I finally, like Teddy needs you more than you need Teddy. Like, I think you would actually give probably an interesting Teddy interview more than anyone else would. So that doesn't be make the sense greatest. It would be the greatest Teddy interview. I wish she had done it back before, before she had the two T's when, because when the, like the height of the hate after she got off of Beverly Hills, because I really think we, we could have cleared some misconceptions at at that time. But um, yeah, I would still love to do that. I mean, she was on Carlos. Oh, she was on Carlos King's podcast and he is a teddy bear as well. And he said she never should have been fired. Oh, and Carlos. you know, Carlos. So- <laughs> Car- okay, Carlos. Okay. <laughs> like, listen, wait, I also don't think like, why can't we see what's in front of us? Like, listen, Teddy wasn't a good uh, housewife. Like, oh my God. Tamara, she, uh, she- Tamara, I see that like, yes, Tamara has done some, like, even if I sometimes don't care for her, she has done some amazing things in the world of housewives. Teddy was there. No, Teddy was, Teddy was in the room part. where it happened. Like Teddy okay, first was all, in the room where it happened to say that just to Teddy was there. She we're was. still talking about Teddy. Okay. Teddy is trending on Twitter every fucking week. Like people are obsessed with Teddy. If Teddy, says something on two T's and a pod. Are you sure it's not like Teddy Ruxpin or like a Teddy Bear is trending It's Teddy Mellencamp. And yes, of course it's negative, but I mean, to have that much of a reaction from the audience, to still be talking about a three season housewife, we're still talking about her. She still enrages people. Like seriously, every story you see about Teddy, the amount of hate comments, I've never seen anything like it. She's like more hated. Like people talk about her more still than like they talk about fucking Vicky Gumbleson or something now. It's astonishing. It's it's what she represents now. Like, you know, she, it's, it's it, it's turned into kind of a runaway joke because she really hasn't done anything that much to even kind of justify the amount of jokes that are thrown her way. But like anything, hasn't the she? joke kind of snowballs. No, I mean, like, listen, I got six hours of Teddy Mellencamp last night and I try to get six to eight hours. Oh, I mean, sleep. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. I got six hours of sleep. Um, no, like this podcast is number one. Okay. She clearly does something on the show. With she her family, yeah. understood the assignment. Okay. She was so we, good at to like bore conf- people to tears. No, is that the to assignment? Conf- okay. The, she only had, she, okay. She, the first season she came on, that was actually the worst season of housewives really ever. And that was not, Yeah, they really fault, did but- go through like a three season drought with well, yeah. the, te- the puppy and all that shit. Yeah. Well, this was before the, she carried the puppy season because she was the one that went up oh, against yeah. Lisa Vanderpump and she, <laughs> she vanquished Lisa Vanderpump. The amount of people. I hear Lisa's have, coming have, back though, by the way. Oh, please. As if they're going to have that 70 year old on the show now when you've got all these, like th- she's not. Wait, are you about to no go? Way. Yeah. Because you're so hot for Erica Jane. When they yeah. have somebody that's getting dick all the time, like <laughs> Erica Jane, they're not going to bring Lisa back in. Lisa Vanderpump has nothing to offer. She shows no accountability for anything ever. She's never apologized for one thing. She has, she has the same sort of syndrome as like Teresa and like Nini, where they just can't take any accountability. Well, for what did any you of think of Teresa's wedding? Speaking of that, like you, did you see all the social media and all that stuff? And where did yes. you stand well, I just with Joe say- and Melissa not going and all that shit? 
I just want to say that Teddy moved the story forward constantly and she was hot and she got in drama and she spoke up for herself. And the last season she was on, she was pregnant and she still showed up and did it while she was like heavily. Like, Teddy was an amazing housewife and she should have stayed on the show. And Carlos King agrees. Now, as for uh, <laughs> Teresa's wedding, I was kind of, I don't know, I probably shouldn't have been surprised, but it was amazing by how much press it got like on Daily it really Mail. Did. I mean it truly everybody showed up for that and it was kind of a fun it was at one of the funner moments to be a Bravo fan even if you didn't like Teresa it was still fun to comment on things and look at the pictures and I kind of am very excited about the two episode series that they're gonna do off of this like I was I was like I don't like Louie but like hey if you're happy let's see let's okay, well, let her he's- He's a dirty John, like he is, he's kind dirty of, John right? 2.0 completely, another like Brooks or whatever, and that's going to end in disaster. But yeah, that was number one. I work at Daily Mail. It was the number one build oh, yeah, on but, Daily Mail oh, no, you showbiz. Do, Daily Mail is still like my favorite fucking, like I, <laughs> I'm on Daily Mail so damn much that it is just insane. I love Daily, do you wait, by the way, do you have any Daily Mail shirts I can have? Or like a oh, shirt? No, but can I maybe buy I can... merch? Let me, I'll try. I'm going to ask. Well, by the way, I feel like you but... guys should sell merch. I would kill for a Daily Mail hat or a shirt. <laughs> like, <laughs> my I, God. I love page six in the New York Post. I would wear their merch, but I probably shouldn't. Um, <laughs> given my job. I want to get um, a, Giddy, a Getty Images shirt. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, it was like the number one story. People were like completely obsessed with that wedding, which was interesting to me. You know, the whole wedding to me looked just like, it just looked like a TV production. Like when I saw fucking that Chanel Ayan there, I'm like, you've been on TV for two weeks. And Dubai, you're at two, yeah. yeah and she's you're like, at, thank you for the invite. Like, I, And she was like so, you could tell she was thrilled. Like what a, what a, it was like Cinderella getting a ticket to the ball I, at the last minute. She was so jazzed. It was so tragic. And I'm like, okay, so basically like did NBC cast this? Like like, was there even was there a guest list or was it just like NBC casting for the wedding? Um, yeah. Let's just get Mario on Lopez to... is over by the yeah. shrimp bar. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Um, like, do, it was Chanel there to like cross promote like Dubai so people can. Just well, kind. I mean, but by the way, at the same time, Jacques, it kind of needs it a little bit. So it was like, yeah. it's kind of well, good just... that she got there. You know. Well, they should just ax it, but that's a whole other thing. No, but I mean, anyway, listen, I, I got to say, I am, I am behind on Dubai like a lot of us are. <laughs> but, for, for, but from social media, everybody says it's found its groove. I don't know if oh, that's, please. is that not true? Okay. I doubt it. I've, I sometimes I watch the, some of the Twitter accounts will, um, share like a fight like i watched a fight with it was chanel and carol and stanbury and it was so annoying and chanel was just talking and talking and talking and it was exhausting and she was making an issue out of like nothing and they were trying it was just it's so, it's awful it's the worst it's the uh, whatever it's so bad <laughs> but um you know the Teresa wedding i don't know i listened to did you see melissa gorga and joe came out on their podcast and spoke about why they weren't there you know i saw but i didn't get to listen to it what was the reason They wouldn't, they couldn't say the reason exactly because they said, look, things are leaked out in the media, which is, I think, is what Melissa had an affair with someone. But yeah, supposedly the season finale of Jersey, which they've already shot, news got brought from like, it was like Dolores's friend said something Mm -hmm. that said something and Teresa was going to use that. So they're saying Teresa wanted to ruin our marriage. So we're not going to go to your wedding. Yeah, they're. I think they're basically acknowledging that's what happened, but they said they couldn't go into details because it's on the show. But they said that the version that's been leaked, they said there's like there's there's another part of that that hasn't come out yet. So and that that like vindicates them more or something. But they seem really done with Teresa, and they were like, yeah, Teresa hates us. <laughs> well, that I mean, but I mean, that's really kind of it. I mean, Teresa yeah. does hate. I mean, like. You always get the sense, like, uh, you can be Melissa and Joe haters all you want, but, like, I do get the vibe that Teresa genuinely hates both of them, and she's repeatedly shown it every season. And I, like, Teresa has one of the most, like, popular, intense fan bases of all of Bravo, (laughs) but I'm like, guys, we can't even agree on this little thing of, like, come on, like, you know, she's horrible. She's Melissa's plans of, like, I'm like, Dude, Teresa shits on these people every chance she gets. She's so awful. She's so toxic and Did horrible. Did you see she gets an, she's getting a new podcast? Teresa oh my god, the, Namaste yeah. bitches with some other yeah, podcaster. I'm yeah. like she can't even string a sentence together and now she's going to have a podcast. Like that is that's so tragic. I mean, I thought it was I mean, I like Melissa, but I thought it was tragic when she started a podcast, but then to have <laughs> Teresa with the podcast, I'm like, "Oh my god, this is Wait, so who, bad." But, I mean, 
we don't know what that podcast will be, but is there a podcaster out there right now in terms of Bravo um, that shouldn't be podcasting? Oh my God, all of them. Um, <laughs> there's a I lot mean, of them. You, it is true. I, if you get a Bravo contract, you immediately get a podcast now. Well, someone asked me on Patreon, they said, can you name the worst Bravo podcasters? And they weren't just talking about talent. They were talking about across the board. And I actually said, I'm like, I know I know you guys want me to trash, you know, X, Y, Z. I'm not naming anyone. But I was like, <sighs> Okay, I'll put it this way, and this is what I had said as well. The worst Bravo podcasts are the ones that you don't even have an opinion on because they're so boring and it is generic. Like they don't have an interesting point of view. Uh, They're just doing the same thing as everybody else. Um, They're not really sort of talented as a commercial broadcaster. Like people like you and Zach Peter are very talented because you guys, like you guys could like host a show. You could, you could get signed to like a contract there and go, oh, we want you to host our new series and you guys could do that. But then a lot of these people, it's like, they're not talented in that regard, but they also don't have interesting opinions. So I'm like, any of these like podcasts that you guys, you know, are wanting me to name and like trash, if they've left that impact on you, they're really not that bad of a podcaster because it's like, we know who they are and we have like a reaction to them. So the worst podcasters are the ones that you don't even realize and have a, a fucking lot, podcast. There's a lot of those. I mean, I do even wonder about that myself and I try to be positive about some things, but it's still like, I'm like, you know, they're almost, it's like, well, we're getting into the glamorous world of podcasting. And then you're like, I, let's see how long this lasts for you. Cause the first thing you're going to find out is that it's not glamorous. The first thing you're going to find out is nobody listens to you at the beginning. Mm-hmm. And like, you, you know, and I'm just like, what does that feel like to like, you know, and if you then keep putting that work in and stuff, like, you know, then maybe, I don't know, it's really weird. And I get sad sometimes when I look at like, cause I'm like, wow, people are still doing tons of new Bravo podcasts all the time so much so that I don't, I mean, I've, I still do Bravo majority, but I do a lot of other like pop culture and all because, you know, it's like at a certain point, this is even tedious and boring and all of that stuff for, yeah, for so, so me, many people you know? are doing it. I, I try to do like you do. I sort of Bravo is my anchor and I try to mix it up. And lately I've actually been doing a lot more Bravo than usual. I think it's because Beverly Hills has been on, but like my show that I'm recording this weekend, I'm actually, I've got, pretty much all non-Bravo topics that I'm like really excited to talk about. I'm talking about this new Meghan Markle tell-all that's out that I read and and some other stuff. And I'm like, oh, I'm glad to have like a bit of a reprieve from the Bravo stuff. But yeah, it is hard work behind the scenes. Not we're here going, oh my God, boo-hoo. But you know, anyone that's did you watch Love? It, I- did you watch Love Island UK? No, I didn't, but I have watched Love Island before. Um, I'm a, this is my first great. season of doing Love Island. I'm, the UK everyone, I've noticed everyone is just jumping onto it now. It's, like, uh, you know, the Americans felt, are I, just into it now. What a cool format. And I hear like you guys have your own Love Island in Australia, right? And that's yes. like supposed to be good too, or is that not? No. It, okay. So we've had like three seasons. I think the f- very first season was amazing. It was so good. And then season two, I did not think was that great. I knew two people on it. And then the third season, I just didn't really care about. But Love Island, when it's a good season, the two seasons I would recommend everyone to watch actually is season one of Australian Love Island. Amazing. And they, they even have like a fist fight. And and because Australians are just like ratchet. And then um, the Love Island UK season, I think it might be season Five. four, the, 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 the one with Danny Dyer and Dr. Alex. And people know, Love Island fans will know what I'm talking about. It's got Dr. Alex. It's got Jack and Danny. It's got Megan Barton Hanson. That season is so good. But yeah, Love but Love Island, not all the seasons are good because I tried to continue with it. And then, you know, because it's such a, it's commitment, a commitment. Yeah. It's like, it's like watching Big Brother. Like it's like five days a week or something. It's crazy. So, but I have noticed that suddenly, I don't know why, but every single American podcaster now is doing Love Island UK and they've just got into it. Well, I Some love plan. that. Like, well, I know because I initially hated it the first week and I was like, what the, these stupid water bottles they're always carrying around with them with their name. And then, and then, you know, like by the third week, I was like, I need to get one of those water bottles. I like, I like that. <laughs> you know, like, I, I really, I, I like when things grow on me. Like I like when, it, you know, that there are these things and, and I watch so much reality and have for so many years now that when I watch like, a, like I started watching Oh, what did I watch? I fucking watched the James Bond No No Time to Die movie last week. And you would have thought it was the best film in the world over how I was watching. Cause I was so excited to see a fucking just stupid story with like, you know, people like spies and stuff. And I was like, wow, where are all the girls arguing? There's no girls arguing with each other. This is amazing. Like, I really got into it. 
I've been doing that lately. I've been watching more scripted stuff. Like I told you before we started recording, I started watching Virgin River on Netflix, which is just this like, which is this like midday soap opera, which I would usually never watch. And I opened actually because I watched Resident Evil as well on Netflix, which was had like. What's it feel like to just completely give up, Jacques? Was it? I mean, what did that feel? I mean, like you've given up completely watching Virgin River. Yes, because the Resident Evil, which are considered like the worst shows, and then I ended up loving both of them, which is so funny. Um, because I usually actually consider myself to have more of a highbrow taste when it comes to like scripted content, and now I'm like doing the Netflix like trash pile stuff, but it was. so nice to like <laughs> to like not Wait, watch reality was, for a while. I don't like I don't know if this is Netflix in every region, but they have this thing on there on Netflix now for the last year where it'll be like, you know, you can choose what you want or it'll be like surprise me. And I'm like, who the fuck has the time where they're like Netflix surprise me? I don't even care what I just show me what I like who does like who has the time to do a surprise me on net like if i go to netflix i want to watch something usually pretty specifically or i'll see but the surprise me what are you are you insane i know we have paths do that we have that too and i usually i'm like i can barely find anything good to watch on netflix but i don't know i've been netflix pilled now finally now that it's like going under and it's considered like the most hated streaming platform suddenly i love it of course with me yeah that's um, okay. <laughs> yeah that's Wait, what do you I'm think I, I, River. i've been talking about streaming services this past week because of the hbo max thing and i don't know how that uh goes over there but i you know, your opinions on ezra miller uh they have you know just embroiled in all of this but they are the lead of a 200 million dollar franchise movie that every day now there's an article if it's going to get released if it's not what is your opinion on the ezra miller uh saga because there's not a day to go by that we don't hear about them um, it's so funny you asked me this because someone asked me that for a Patreon Q&A as well. And I said, I've never seen a Ezra Miller movie in my life. I don't know oh, what he's in. Oh, the Perks of Being a Wallflower is pretty I, good. Yeah, I, I, that one, I know I know of that movie. And that was when I was like, oh, yeah, that's meant to be good. And that Let's Talk About Kevin is meant to be good as well, which oh, I haven't yeah, seen I that. that but I think, is that a school shooter one? Yeah. I don't know. The book is the book is so much better than the movie. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. But I've never seen any of his movies. I don't I actually don't follow that many like Hollywood actor people, like what what they're up to. I know that he's some like a non-binary rapist that attacks people in 7-Elevens or something. I well, (laughs) I mean I mean mean, not 7-Elevens, Hawaii or Okay, in Hawaii. (laughs) <laughs> that's but no i don't have a take on it. i realize i haven't even watched any of these i don't watch that much like modern stuff actually last night i re-watched um jaws which i hadn't watched it since i was a kid you know what hot take didn't think it was that good on upon rewatch and Dude, it's I, from 1978 of course yeah, it's but not I, that good you've seen all I, these films that have like been inspired and gone way further than that movie now so no, there's no I, way you can like that movie but I love 70s. I love that's really like the golden age of cinema. So I love all of like the 70s classics, you know, like like Chinatown and and Godfather and all of the 70s movies. And I was like, you know, I haven't watched Jaws since I was a kid. I used to love Jaws 1 and 2. And then I watched it again. I'm like, this is just like a shit blockbuster from like the I mean, it was okay, but I was I like, mean, it this was is not the, that good. It truly was considered the first blockbuster. It yeah. changed how people view summer movies, created that whole thing. Yeah. Um, I started watching The Nice Guys on Netflix last night. I love that Here's movie. With, with Ryan, Ryan Gosling, Gosling and Russell Crowe. And I, I'm only 30 minutes into it, but I, I was watching before I went to bed. And I loved, I was like, this is fucking good. It's and Shane so... Black wrote it, who did Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, which I loved that movie with Val Kilmer a lot uh, and Robert Downey Jr. But yeah, it's it's really nice, you guys. I don't, I'm sure I don't need to tell you this, to watch scripted television sometimes. It's a really good palate cleanser from all of the BS. And it's nice to see something with structure and like a story. Um, but the, the HBO Max, thing I wanted to say just because Discovery Plus is merging and taking over HBO Max. So the 90 Day Fiance universe will be side by side with shows like Succession, <laughs> which just feels so wrong to me in so many ways. But also the Discovery Plus side is winning out over the HBO Max because reality shows are so cheap to produce. Yeah, that, I mean, I don't know. I want to say it's sad, but I it's, it's funny because I always felt 
especially before I did the podcast, like I would have friends that were just into kind of like, you know, scripted TV and don't watch reality. Like I was always the reality fan here in Australia and I appreciate, you know, cinema and stuff too. Okay. I'm not like, I don't just sit at home, like, you know, yeah, you watch watching the rest my, of the my movies. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I actually don't watch the movies. I just watch yeah. the series, but anyway. Um, and I was always like, God, I hate this snobby attitude to reality TV. Um, you know, that it's, that it's lesser than, and these shows are so entertaining and they have so much to offer. And now that I'm so deep into it, it's like, it's like when you just having so much junk food that you want to eat vegetables. Like, so then when I am watching the scripted stuff, like I was going back trying to find like, you know, good seventies films to watch. I mean, I settled on Jaws, but I, (laughs) it was between that and like some more credible things, but um, yeah, it's, we we, de- we need to have a balance, I think. I think we need yeah, to I think get back to a bit more of a balance diet. Um, as we start winding down, we had talked about, I, I, I'm i trying to remember, I don't know if it's DM or the last time you were on, what's going on with the love life? You were talking about getting into the shape to <laughs> date again and all of this stuff. Where oh my God, are I told we, you about that. Where are we in this? Are we dating? Are we hooking up? What are we doing? Okay, I am getting in shape. I joined. Okay, so for people that don't know, I... I grew up in a small town, but I left at like 16 and moved to the city. And I was there for, I was there for like working there for years and years. And then when COVID happened, uh, you know, we had like a lock because we had really full on lockdowns in Australia. And, you know, I didn't really know what was going to happen. And my mom was like, well, you know, move back home to, you know, your small town, you know, just move here for a while and see what happens. And then, I ended up moving here and then I ended up getting a place and now I've moved back here permanently. And I liked I liked the idea of going back to a small uh, my small town because actually it's really it's really nice here. Okay, like it's like fucking move to Virgin River. It's great. It has all of these like really great oh features. God. Um, you know, like, but I have like no social life, no dating life. Um, and well, so like, there's you're not on any of the apps. I'm on like the that. apps, but everyone on them's terrible. Like <laughs> they're so bad, and it's really funny actually. Because before I came, I was like, well, I know there's going to be like limited options here, but I'm like, well, I'm from the city, and like I'll probably be, you know, I'm like considered really average in the city because everyone there is like an in, you know Instagram models and stuff like that. Yeah. But I'm like, oh, I'll be like a b- bigger fish in a small pond, so I'll be able to have like my pick of the litter. I'll be able to have anyone I want if I move back here, and then I get on the apps, and there's like everyone's completely like just no one I would ever date. The thing with the small towns with gay people specifically is anyone that, and this is a shit on sport because I'm from a small town. I actually love living here, but it's like. A lot of people that if they've got anything going on, they leave, especially if you're gay, because there's not much of a gay lifestyle. So they'll move to the city. So it's like all the good people move out. And then the things that you're left with are the dregs. There's one attractive person on Grindr that I'm obsessed with. He's so my type. And of course, he just doesn't even <laughs> message you back. Hi, <laughs> left on red. I'm uh, like, okay, well, the one <laughs> cute guy. <laughs> it's, no, it's a fucking disaster. And I'm actually, I don't know what to do with my life at the moment because I love everything else about living here. Like I actually prefer this to living in the city. Like I have way more money. I live in like a big house now. Like before in the city, I'm like sharing a, an apartment with like, you know, a flatmate. Um, and here I have like a big giant house to myself. There's, you know, and there's still, it's still nice. There's still nice things here. There's still nice restaurants. There's places to go swimming in the summer. There's all these like good things, but socially I just like cannot connect with no no one's on my wavelength i mean i have a weird personality anyway so it was not like i had like a million friends in the city but here it's even harder and um the the dating prospects are an absolute zero i always dreamed that i would meet someone online everyone listening to my show knows this i'm like i'll meet like a hot american and i'll get on 90 day fiance and then i'll like move to america (laughs) that that didn't happen so i don't know what i'm doing with my life you know who else is from a small town who john mellencamp (laughs) <laughs> a lot of the songs are about being a small town life. So that, that's what, you know. And Erica Wait, Jane is too. Then she moved to the yeah. city and made all her dreams I come true. My <laughs> grandma, she drove me in and a letter from her. No. Um, Wait, so what you are, re- uh, you're sure, I thought that was your own merch, but it's Leah McSweeney merch. Yes, bitch, bitch mob, bitch married mob? to the mob. Yeah, married to the Wait, mob. She's we been on it. your show, right? Yeah, she has. I love Leah. What um, the fuck, man? Why is Le- Leah won't like, why won't you do my show, Leah? I don't understand. You follow me. I even joke about it. Like you won't do my, what? I don't know what the deal is. 
she's she's picky, but then she did do a lot of she did do a lot of podcasts when she was promoting her book. So I thought you would have gone on. I she's think she picky, did... but it's not like I'm a fucking dumb. Like no, I'm not, no, I'm not no like you're an idiotic no, I, pod, you know. Like, no. I mean, I'm idiotic, but it's not like I come on. You follow I do me. know that I think she was trying to. Where Dude, I know when she was prom- yeah, when she was well, when she was promoting the book because the book doesn't have that much stuff about Bravo in it. It's more about like her. Sobriety I think that's what her- she. I think that's what she thinks that like I want. I'm like, girl, like you don't realize that I don't even usually talk about Bravo with some of the Bravo celebrities because mm. you know I'd rather actually get to know. But it, it, I'm just like, gee, come on, Leah, please. Well, I want her to. I want her to come back on my show again, and we're friends. But I'm act- I'm kind of scared to ask her because. No, fuck you know, that. You know, Ask her to do my show. Fuck <laughs> her. Like, fuck your but, show. Do you get this though sometimes? So like, if you're like friendly with someone that would you want to have as a guest, then you kind of feel like, well, because they're friends, I don't want them to feel like I'm like putting them in an awkward position totally, where they're going to have totally. to say yes or they're going to feel awkward to decline. So then you don't want to ask them. Oh, yeah. All the yeah. time. All, I mean, all the time. I do that all. And people uh, that I work with get so frustrated at me for that. But I really, truly, it's always like this battle in my mind of like, well, if I say this, then they're going to have to feel like they have to say this. And then it's weird, too, because then you get your ego's involved, too. And they're like, and you then go like, well, they should want to do it. I think I'm on OK interview. You know, like you, you, you have these stupid arguments with yourself that are completely idiotic. Mm-hmm. But you can't help but do it if you care about it. You can't help but well, are you still like super into YouTube and all that stuff too? Yes. Yeah. I watch, I, I'm like mostly into YouTube. I actually haven't not been listening to that many podcasts lately. Although, you know, what podcast I did get into and now I'm obsessed with it. I fucking love um, Giggly Squad with Anna Burner and Paige. It's like my favorite podcast now. It's the resident <laughs> evil of podcasts, you guys. It is the virgin river of pod. No, I mean, I hear it's, I hear it's good. I hear, you know, it a obviously few weeks, does well. Like a few weeks ago, because I had heard it before and I kind of thought this is stupid. And then like I put it on a few, weeks ago and then i was like they are so funny together they have such good banter and i think as well like last year i was actually listening to a lot of political content like all the podcasts i was listening to were like political uh, yeah that, those are the podcasts i still listen to were like political yeah yeah well i was listening to all the political stuff like constantly and then this year i was just like you know this is just the same shit over and over like nothing really changes this is kind of just boring and i'm like now i'm wanting to listen to fun things so i am listening to like giggly squad and and stuff like that and there's some other podcasts I'm listening to that review like you know movies and, and and art and culture and I'm like more into that and I'm kind of like wanting a bit of a break from the the politics and and just it, you know it's just so... yeah I was bummed the other day because I got sucked into watching that Donald Trump shit with the the Mar-a-Lago thing oh the FBI I, raid I, yeah I watched it for a couple of hours and then it reminded I got I got sad though because it just reminded me of like years ago when I just would watch cable news all the time and wake up and listen to the daily and yeah. first and all of this stuff. And I was like, Oh my God, I don't miss those days. You know, like it, 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 our political system over here, especially really truly seems like a reality show in itself. So you have to really be careful to not, cross those streams or you can be really messed up you don't it. yeah you do not want to get too sucked in by it and i always thought that other people were too sucked in but i wasn't but then i realized like god i would listen to like hours of this stuff every day yeah. breaking down the latest in the white house and stuff and then i'm like who the fuck cares like yeah, but is that much also, really like, I'm not, i don't i don't want to talk about it i don't want to be on it's, their pod i don't like i'm like literally I, and yeah. even the trump it's funny you mentioned the trump thing because i went oh yeah i should like, i'm like what's going on with this like trump raid i should probably like find out about that so i put on like so I put on YouTube and I'm like, okay, like let's break this down. It was sort of on the background. I'm like, I'm not even listening to this. Okay, I already, I already knew he's corrupt. So do I need to listen well, to always, three hours? They have hours one of this? slice of information. They have like one piece of information that everybody is making hours and hours of shows around. And then you got the YouTubers and podcasters on both sides making all of their money and like donate, don't. I mean, Trump probably loved it because he had one of the best <laughs> fundraising days of his life. So like, he was like, hell yeah, man, bring that on. But it's just wild to see all, I mean, talk about Bravo podcasters, go into political <laughs> podcasters and their shows all on YouTube. I mean, you want to, you know, you want a reality show though. Those guys, I mean, the one guy I was watching, this, what is it, Stephen Crowder or whatever? He's wearing oh, yeah, a yeah, fucking Crowder. gun holster on his, like, come at me. I'm like, you idiot. You're in a podcast studio. You're wearing a gun holster. Go, I mean, come on. Like, live in a real world. 
you know, with a lot of those, a lot of those those podcasters, they're all like, I mean, they're all the political people. They're all fake behind the scenes, you know. Like, oh, yes. they're, they're it's all, all money. Acting. This is yeah. a money making operation. And the sad thing is, though, that real people buy into this stuff yeah. on both sides. Yeah, it's on and all it, sides of it. They're it, just trying so to. They're, they're doing a grift, like, it's, and, and and they're making really good money at it. They're really making great money at it, and that's really intense. I mean, you could say the same thing about the Johnny Depp trial and everybody that kind of made their career off of that all of a sudden i mean it really goes so anyways i could talk to you forever i've already talked to you for like an hour and a half i think so i'm sorry for keeping you so oh, long i didn't um, realize we we're going that long cool love it yeah uh that went super quick but you got to come back on anytime you want just always reach out um but uh what else is coming up that we need to support you with so go subscribe to the podcast which how do we yes. find the podcast is it just oh yeah uh Unpopular with Jacques Peterson. You can find me on social media at Unpopular JP on Instagram and Twitter. I'm mostly on Instagram. I'm always posting Instagram stories of what I'm watching. Go check out my podcast. Yeah, it's a lot of Bravo, but it's a lot of other things. I've had some good interviews recently. Like I obviously I had Kelly Dodd on. That's, you know, if you can handle Kelly Dodd, go listen to that. Please don't listen and then leave me some review of like, I can't believe she didn't want yeah, to get guys, vaccinated went, or whatever. I, just I, I try. I mean, they all know that. I always like, if you don't like my pod or the, uh, you know, any pod that you like, just, just don't listen to it ever again you don't yeah, need no. to leave a you know like <laughs> you know like honestly that 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 hurts too is like dwindling numbers suck just as much as a bad review oh i know i i actually don't listen to i don't look at my numbers anymore which is good you know because i used to like look at them all the time and like i always joke that my podcast is a flop which it kind of is but my engagement is like sky high because i have like the most amazing engagement but like my actual like numbers are like not that impressive oh, but i, I have dream the- about I, I dreamt about podcast numbers the other night where I dreamt I was getting fired and they were like, well, nobody bought any of the products you did advertisements for. Like I literally had that dream. And that's then the I reality up, being a content creator, by the way, that's what it's yes, like behind the was scenes. That I was like, I hope somebody buys a vibrator this week. From me. <laughs> like, you know, but like, you know, cause you're like, oh my God. But I really did have this stress dream about that. And I woke up and it was one of those dreams where it took me 10 minutes to realize that that wasn't true you know like that i will like would that happen in my dream not real life you know i've been able to separate it more i think because i still i'm still working at daily mail and it's more my hobby thing i think then if it was just my one job i would be because that's where your paycheck's coming from but yeah i have a lot of i had kelly dot on i had thomas kelly the producer oc producer and we talked about and was that I the have, one that that left recently yeah and he was on heather mcdonald's show as well so wait, but, wait is that did he leave because of debro or what was wasn't there a story there of some sort there was he if you read between the lines that I didn't ask him. I actually like Heather DeBro and I didn't ask. And also he had just been on Heather McDonald's podcast and she asked him about that. And I didn't want to like copy her interview. And cause my interview came out like sort of a few days after her. So I didn't want to like rip her off. So I tried to ask all different stuff out of respect to her, but he did talk about that a lot on her podcast. If you read between the lines, yeah, but I think Heather DeBro got him fired. If you, that's what I hear word on the street. Dude, I, I had um, Heather McDonald on a little bit ago and she was I'm awesome. so jealous. Like, she I want to get her on mine. I mean, really, truly, I, I gotta say, I I really, you know, what she has done. I've, I've, this audience has now heard me say, I, I'm really just so impressed with what she's done, like trying to do what, I mean, to do it at the level that she's doing it at. And, you know, it's just, it's just so, I mean, truly amazing, you know? Yeah, I, I love Heather McDonald. But yeah, and I've had other people like I had um Shane Dawson on the the YouTuber who he was like oh, the shit. biggest he's like the biggest YouTuber of yeah. all time. Yeah. Yeah, he's like One the of... biggest YouTuber ever. And then he had like the biggest cancellation of all time. And then my interview was like one of the first interviews he did since since being canceled. Dude, that's and huge. How did you get him? So funny. He was a he was a became a fan of my show. So I've had Heidi Montag and Spencer. I've had Spencer Pratt on a couple of times and I had Heidi Montag on. I'm like the Love biggest, Spencer, yeah. yeah, I'm like the biggest Spidey super fan ever. And then Shane Dawson was trying to look up, you know, Heidi Montag. And then he came across my podcast and then he liked my podcast and he started following me on, on Instagram. I remember. And I was like, it's Shane Dawson following me. And I saw that and I'm like, okay, he must, it must be one of those big accounts that just has some bot that just yeah, follows. No, like yeah, a, I always do that too. Of a big three hundred thousand. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, okay, this is by this is probably a PR agency following me. Yeah, and then uh, I see them. it, and it's like he's not following that, and I'm like, holy shit. And then I'm like, okay, I want to DM him, but I can't DM him too quick because then it's too thirsty. So I'm waiting, and then we like we became friends, and then I'm like, 
was scared to ask him to come on my pod because again I didn't want to put him in like a awkward position I know that because he was like in all this controversy I mean he yeah. was like his cancellation was huge like that went that was like was that the one because news. he said he was gonna fuck a cat or something like yes that? well that was one of that was I mean it was he was gonna fuck a cat he had problematic you know videos from like 10 years ago oh that, yes over where on done the, the dress ups it, and the, yes yeah. it was I mean it was you name it that was there um <laughs> <laughs> you know, but he was cancelled for it. Um, and a lot of it was um anyway, you can listen to the interview because we we, we talked yeah, about it. He's I very open. Like, that's really he's, fascinating. He's I mean, really what's what's he doing now? Like is he just um he's back on YouTube, YouTube he's got a oh, podcast, he's back yeah, and he's so nice too, which is funny because I've had some of these people that um some of these people that are being cancelled or in all this controversy and stuff, and I've had them on my show, and it's like behind the scenes, they are the nicest people like so nice like i've had this youtuber shallon lester on my show before she's controversial she's been cancelled and she's been like so helpful to me behind the scenes like she came on my podcast when i just started and i was like a nobody and then gives me career advice and we're friends we're actually we're going i'm going to miranda lambert with her next i'm coming to us next year so i'll catch up with you oh sweet coming awesome. to us yeah, yeah in vegas and i'm seeing miranda lambert's concert but with shallon lester i've become friends with it it's funny and then there's people that i know that in the industry that have these like squeaky clean reputations everyone thinks like oh my god you know they're so nice and they're not problematic and i'm just like oh my god i have like horror stories about people that have worked with this person behind the scenes it's just really funny the way you perceive people publicly especially like you know probably controversial people what they're actually like behind the scenes versus these people that have like this perfect image and then in real life i'm like you know because we all talk like all of us all us podcasters all of us you know we and we talk to other you know reality people and stuff so we hear things and it's just it's interesting of what's publicly out there versus what you hear behind the scenes <laughs> i know it is i mean it's interesting to have like a different perspective on it than what and that's why i really don't take anything at face value anymore like i kind of just like uh, uh you know or like i don't it's you know or where i even started off with making memes i'm kind of different as because i'm like well that's you know, like I start thinking yeah. it down the line a little bit more. And sometimes that sucks because it used to be so nice to just hit wildly, which I still can sometimes do. But even like I, I was talking to the audience about Jax Taylor recently because I was like, it's My not man. as fun. It's not as fun. Yeah. By the way, he, 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 I think he's lying and saying he has a podcast coming out soon. Are you excited to? Oh, hear that? I will. Even? I will listen to that one actually because I support my man in everything he does. Well, but I, I like people are like still like come and like make and I'm like it's not as fun for me if he's not on the show like if he's on yeah. the show it gives me but if he's not on the show then I'm just making fun of somebody that literally potentially is having the worst couple of years of their lives and just You're bullying a lies. single dad wait I want to ask single you a question dad. <laughs> I want to I want to ask you a question um which housewife or bravo celebrity are you closest to that you talk to the most probably ariana and tom i bet you know like oh yeah Sandoval and ariana like i'm um i'm trying to think who i mean there's like the you know there's the ones that all we like margaret will always uh margaret joseph will always and she talks to everyone doesn't she yeah ex- exact exactly she doesn't Merce- talk to me i wish she did mercedes I love from shaw's i talk to a bunch now um you know, but I, that never was my goal. So I don't look for that. Like, and I also still think there's comedic value in like, oh my God, but you're, I don't think you're really going to catch me like going, oh my God, such and such likes my post. And like, you know, the people that do that on Instagram, oh, you know, I, I know. Yeah. I kind of grew out of that phase of it, you know, yeah. like, um, but a lot of people think- you can consider like I some of the reality people that I've become I would be like oh I could be like maybe consider them a friend like you don't want to like overstep it because you think like oh would they consider me a friend or are we just Instagram oh yeah people? I'll get, some people you get yeah, along totally. with very well oh yeah and then so like, then I'm kind of like well I don't want to use like I'm big on not using people so I'll always be like I don't want to overstep and I don't want to do this and that's probably hurt me more than helped me in life across the board but yeah some of these people are really great people that are genuinely like oh i would genuinely be friends with this person but i just don't want to be another person coming from like another side angle because they you know even if it's reality people still want tons of things from these people oh totally and you you always feel that because it's but like you and i we're both genuine you know i know you like you're really genuine and stuff and so am i so when i'm like befriending these people i'm like i'm not one of these like weird social climbing like meme accounts that's like just you know wants to 
uh, you're trying to get well, something that's, I mean, from that, you and then I'm going to oh, leak we, your DMs when we have a fight. Well, I think, like, I'm I think not, I think we're potential. I mean, I think we might be talking about the same person, but I mean, there is those accounts that I've talked about that on the show too, of like you, it's like, man, they're so, they just, they want that high follower count. They want, and I've yeah. been so lucky to get that without having to like truly do something completely stunt driven, or I've never had to be a gossip account. Like, I don't think I could do that. Like, I don't want to have that in me for so many reasons, one of them being laziness, but like, I don't like, you know, but sometimes I'm just like, man, this feels like you're trying to inject yourself into this story more than reporting oh, on anything. And it's then it's so gross. It's and, and then they'll always be like, no, no, I'm not trying to do that. No, no, no. And then they'll continue to do exactly that same thing. And you're like, and, okay. and then when you start, when you start chatting to like a housewife or whatever, and you're getting along really well, but then I'll always think in my back of the, in the back of my mind, oh, do they think of me? Like I'm one of them, you know, like, are they, are they, do they have their guard up thinking that I'm going to be like one of these weird, you know, podcast and meme people that is just trying to like get a screenshot out of them or something so you have like like that paranoia because you want to connect to them like just like a friend not as on you know and it's just it's weird <laughs> well i mean i kind of just i mean we come from that like the stern or even rogan or anything like that it's like i want to have an honest conversation with i want to have something that is a little above the like hey what did, tell me about your audition for southern chair you know like you know you can start there but it would be cool if you could actually go somewhere else with it and that takes a lot because you know, we're still nobodies to a lot of these people. So you have to prove yourself in the same interview as you're trying to get something unique. And that's nearly impossible with these people just because it's, you're, you're not a Stern and you're not a, you know, so, yeah. you know, Stern and Joe Rogan and these people, they have the trust where people go in there now and they want to impress, they want to give them dirt. They want to like go down avenues that, you know, you're not going to be able to get on a Bravo podcast. Well, some of these people are, they are like, when Shane Dawson came on my show, I'm like, he's so genuine because I'm like, I'm a fucking nobody. And he has like 8 million followers on Instagram, you know, like he doesn't, he could go on anyone's show and he went because he, because we became, you know, friendly. When Leah came on my show, she wasn't doing that many Bravo podcasts. And she was like, yeah, she's like, you know, we're friends. You, you know, I, I would always say, how nice dare you, about- Leah? How dare <laughs> you? I mean, like, seriously, this is so I will, I'll up. tell Leah, I'll, I'll, message, I'll tell her to come Please. on. Please, my God. I don't, I will not even mention Bravo. I'll be like, you, I heard you did a TV no, show. I think she talks. No, seasons. I think she, though, no, I think she talks. I think she talks about it. And I always, no, I felt- think just from your, my page, people, I think genuinely think that I, uh, you know, which by the way, I, don't blame them sometimes is thinking, like, Oh, that's a dodo bird. That's like, you know, like he's making silly, you know, cause it is silly. It is that, but people don't realize that they're like, well, I actually do read. I actually do read, you know, like I actually read Leah's book. I actually, yeah. you know, like I do prepare for these things, which is, you know, hysterical in well, itself, but I take it seriously like you do, you know? And I felt so, I felt bad because she's one of these, like, she's almost like, she's not Teddy status, but people really hate her. Like people are so mean about her online. And I'm like, no, she's really cool. So I kind of, I think it's good if she does do more, like if she comes on shows like yours and then people can go like, oh yeah, like that. Cause I, when I had her on my show, I remember I got a lot of messages going, oh, I hated Leah before and now I see, oh, she's actually cool. And I like her. And I'm like, yeah. Those are my favorite interviews when people are like, oh, I really liked that person. I thought I hated them, but I listened. And I'm like, that's the purpose of, I think, especially Bravo interviews is because people are so intense about the fandom that you can really turn people a little bit more towards somebody, you know, they're like, oh, it was different actually hearing them speak because people forget they're actually watching a show. I know. And I want to do oh. that with Teddy. So, okay. I got to, yes. I got to, okay. We got to stop this. Jock Peterson, unpopular. You know him. You love him. You might even hate him, but you love you to listen to him. Me. So, go, go listen. It really is a great podcast, you guys. Uh, and, uh, you know, like I said, always welcome on this show. Thank you so much for taking so much time with us today. Thanks so much for having me. Bye, guys. Fuck Teddy Melanchthon. Bye, guys. 